Hello and welcome everybody. This is Clint Seely. Welcome to a, another video tutorial. This is a one of my first subscription level video tutorials. And this is kind of a continuation upon a, a few of the different applique techniques that I've already uh, taught and recorded video tutorials for. A few of them are in my um, collection of free videos that you can you can view and you can hop on over to passionstitch.com or uh, my YouTube channel and check those out. But today, what I'm going to be covering, what I'm going to be showing you is how, to, how we can create something simple, a shape or a letter in the art canvas and then we are going to convert it to applique easily and then we're going to spice it up a notch we're going to add some extra effects to make your applique even more awesome. So let's get started. Here I have V7 open and of course by default it opens up in the digitizing side. I want you all to go ahead and switch to the art canvas which is the Corel draw side. And if you remember the art canvas is just over here, okay? this little icon right here left click on that dude and we will open up Corel draw or what we call the art canvas <clears throat> today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with just one letter we're gonna start off with a letter uh, my last name is Seely so I'm gonna do an S the, this is also great because the S is going to be the first letter in my baby girl's name Sonia so when I create something with an S, that can e either be for Sonia or that can be for Seely. So I want you to move your mouse on over and hover right over here above vector lettering. It looks like a little A. And left click that A, which will engage the lettering tool. Now we can click and start typing in letters. Now I rehearsed this tutorial usually up here when you when you switch to lettering mode this will usually say Arial or it'll or it'll be the last font that you had dealt with so I'm gonna go ahead you don't have to do this I'm gonna switch back to Arial that way it's probably gonna look very similar to what you're looking at on on your computer screen as we hover over the screen you'll notice the cursor has changed okay normally it looks like this arrow here but when we're in lettering mode there you can see the cursor has changed to show you yes I'm in lettering mode well yes I'm in lettering mode just left click on the background and you'll see the blinking cursor now the blinking cursor is going to be small that's because your text is only 12 points high let's go ahead and click the drop down list and let's move that on up to at least a hundred and then your cursor is going to be a little bit bigger move it up to 100 or you can do 150 this letter is gonna be big we want the letter to be big because of course it's gonna end up being applique so I'm gonna um, type in a capital S and it's gonna look very standard it's gonna look very plain and then I'm gonna come back over and left click the selection arrow alright because I'm done with lettering mode I'm just clicking in one letter so you type in whatever letter you choose type that dude in then go back over and left click your select artwork arrow and here we go I want even though our text is hundred and fifty points large it's gonna be much larger than that so I'm gonna hover over this little black box here in the corner and grab that dude and make that a big S alright I'm gonna recenter everything and there we go now you'll notice as a reminder you'll notice let's look over here <clears throat> right now we're still dealing with artistic text you'll see in the object manager over here now your object manager may not be um, loaded or showing you may still have the little box here that says hints if that's the case you'll see over here to the right we have little tabs one of the tabs will say hints down here I, I've gotten rid of that tab but if your hints are showing go to the tab that says object manager and left click that and then your object manager docker will be showing and you can see what I'm looking at here artistic text it says artistic text now once we are done 
selecting the letter we want and the font style that we want the letter to be before we convert this to embroidery the last thing that we want to do is convert this artistic text to curves don't do it right now okay you don't do it right now let me show you why okay if I convert this to curves right now we're air we're looking at our artistic text and we have tools up here that we can use because we're dealing with text if we right click and watch this if we right click and convert to curves the program is going to get rid of those tools the program then treats this as just a piece of vector art okay you no longer have those tools for lettering available to you because it's a curve even though it looks like an s it's a curve so i'm going to go back and I'm, I'm going to undo what I just did, and you can see once again, yes, we are dealing with lettering. I'm going to stay in lettering because let me, I'm going to just, for display purposes, move this S over to the right-hand side of the screen. And I'm going to click the little drop-down menu and start looking for different styles of S's. Now, this is something that you could spend 10 minutes on. You could spend 20 minutes on. If y'all have ever played with fonts before in an artistic way, you know you can burn a lot of time being creative, and that's fine. Spend time finding the S that you want, or the D, or the A, whatever letter you're going to be dealing with. Okay, I really like for applique, one of the fonts that I like is this Cooper Standard Black. All right, that's the one that I found. Now, remember, if you anytime you're on the art canvas side anytime you're dealing with a graphic that's not centered if you press down P on your keyboard P that recenters in the middle of the document that recenters your graphic so I really like this S for applique you'll notice there are some thinner spots than others but uniformly this is a fat letter and you remember remember one of the real important things when making applique is deal with fat stuff we want fat stuff it doesn't matter if we change the color because this the whole area right here that's black that's going to end up being the fabric that you choose anyway so we don't have to go through and change colors and start getting all fancy right here we we've found the letter that we want it's nice and thick it looks good you're happy okay so once you get to that point where they're going to convert this letter to curves and you can do that by right hovering over the item right clicking and that dialog box pops up and you can you can left click convert convert to curves and you can right you can right click over here as well on the artistic text and then select convert to curves you can do it either way i showed you both ways so now what we're really dealing with we're dealing with a true vector gra graphic a curve when we convert this to embroidery it's able to through the conversion process it's able to easily translate that information into embroidery when we're dealing with interactive shaping tools and artistic text sometimes the program gets a little confused this is an important reason why we need to convert to curves okay so let's go ahead and left click on convert and boom there we go now you'll notice this looks like embroidery but there's something else you may notice um, different about my screen than yours is you don't see the hoop that's just because I've disengaged the hoop you can see it's right there right on that little button right there show or hide the hoop when I'm creating things like this I usually hide the hoop and then when I'm done creating I'll, re I'll engage the hoop and I'll resize as necessary to fit inside the hoop that I want want to embroider this out on okay so just for these purposes I have disengaged the hoop as far as viewing the hoop and we're looking at just the S I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here by rotating the track wheel on my mouse forward and you can see this looks like embroidery now it's just black it's not pretty but that's that's okay because this is gonna be applique an easy way to turn this to applique is once the S is selected you can left click on the applique and then hit enter on your keyboard left click and enter and now we have applique alright that's an easy way to do it just left click on applique hit enter on the keyboard don't be mousing back over 
in the screen because then you're starting to draw an applique and everything will get confused and the screen will go all over the place and you'll have to hit the escape key and blah 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 anyway shortcut just left click here on applique and hit enter on the keyboard now here we've got applique you can see if I if I let me go ahead and return to my because I'm done editing and or digitizing that shape so I'm going to return to just my select my select object arrow and that way I can't really mess anything up if I hover over my color film you'll see here's our applique we have a placement line right here we have a tack down line right here and then we have our finishing stitch we have, it's the program has automatically created this now you have complete control over your applique element as well if the item is selected and we go up here and left click on the object properties icon you'll can see, you'll, you'll see object properties opens up and the applique tab is engaged okay you want to make sure that tack down is checked and especially placement line is checked now you'll notice <clears throat> that as we're looking at this all we see is the finishing stitch you can't see the tack down of course you can't see the placement line we're just looking at a yellow or a blue it may be blue on your screen finishing stitch we don't even see the fabric we just have a transparent item here now if you're wanting to get artistic about this because we're going to spice it up and you really want to get a good idea of what this project is going to look like when you're done we can we can put fabric in here okay we could put fabric right in here or we could fill it with a color say you're going to choose a fabric with a pattern we can do that or say you're just going to do a plain looking fabric just a colored fabric you know something nice but plain because we're going to spice it up you may not need a busy pattern uh fabric pattern let me show you how to do that if you already have the object properties dialog box open like this you see this little area right here this is fabric right now it just has a red X that means there's no fabric there's nothing selected so that's why this is see-through let's make it look let's make this look look nice so let's left click on the choose and you can see you can see here now your screen may be a little bit different depending on what fabric libraries are loaded into the program for mine this Benartex uh, library is loaded all the way up to the bar uh, Benartex 2013 and you can see let me show you a few things here you can see the different collections so you can go and you can find a fabric pattern hit apply and see it looks like fabric now the, these this Benartex fabric is this is stuff you can actually go out and buy so this isn't like a, a mock-up or a sample you could probably track this exact pattern down somewhere so you're really looking at exactly the way it would look in the finished product that's pretty cool for this demonstration however and you could spend like just like selecting a font you could spend hours going through all these fabric patterns and I suppose some of you will but for today's purposes I'm just gonna switch to colors and I'm gonna find you know let's just say a nice pink like a girl's pink you can select any color and let's hit um, apply and now we're looking at a pink this would just be like a plain colored pink fabric but it looks a little more realistic we don't have to look at that background okay you can get a better idea of what all of this is going to look like and then I'll hit okay now for <clears throat> for the purpose of what I'm gonna do if we were just creating simple applique we would be done at this point if you're just wanting to learn how to uh, turn a shape into applique and you've got a, a nice looking plain old applique there you go now what I real the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to show you is what I'm getting ready to do right now we're gonna spice this up if you've seen some of Bernina's new design collections like the Bella Maraca and things like that you can see that there's some cut work stuff in there but there's also some nice applique stuff that that is embellished on top of the applique well you can do all that right inside v7 you ladies can do all of that sitting here right now with the program that you have let me show you okay let me show you and let's make this easy once you're to this point the hard stuff is over let's look at the color film and what we're going to do is we're going to use 
this placement line. This first line right here is what we're going to use to create the, the extra effects, the spicing up. Now, if you know anything about the program or you've already done applique previously, you'll know that you can't just select individual items when dealing with applique. That's why we have the break apart feature. Okay, we need to break this applique apart so I can select just the place, placement line and do something with it. So I believe we'll go over to the edit and you can see right here, see where it says break apart? Okay, let's left click break apart and not much has changed, but the one thing that has changed is I can select these items individually. Now forget about the tack down and forget about the placement line. We're done with those. Okay, we're going to left click on the the um or forget about the tack down and the covering stitch we're going to click on the placement line and then what i want you to duplicate this this item just to hold the control key down and hit d on the keyboard a control d watch this control d and there we have another line now looking at this initially you may just think i took the placement line and moved it to the front moved it to the top i did not the placement line is still there on the as the first object and then if we scroll down you can see I duplicated an object that placement line and now it's the last thing to go now what we can do with this placement line is we can move this placement line depending on how you want it say I'm gonna move it right over that finishing stitch now you can see here what would happen is <clears throat> you would have a you would have the the original placement line the tack down the finishing stitch and then to spice it up a little bit it's going to do a running stitch right on top of that cover stitch and you can see you can get an idea of how that's going to look okay now this bright yellow is not the color i really want to go with with this pink so that's easy to change we'll just click on this yellow and let's maybe turn this what maybe like a teal blue okay let's see the wife really likes pink and, and navy, or not navy, pink and teal, like this here. And then we got a pink finish, or we got that pink running stitch there. Well, that looks kind of nice, but that's not, that's better, but that's not real spicy. Okay, let's make it spicy. Like Emeril Lagasse says, bam, spice it up, bam. Okay, so look here. We'll just reselect that last stitch okay and I'm gonna zoom let me zoom in here so you can you can see what I'm talking about we'll select that last pink stitch and it's just kind of a boring running stitch right now when as you know you can change this to anything that you want we can make a decorative stitch out of it we can candle wick it we can go to a pattern run which I kind of like in this example so let's do that let's then left click on your object properties and that's see here we go it's got okay this is the outline stitch it's just a simple single running stitch kind of boring not real spicy we can click outline type and go down to pattern run now once you get into pattern run we have a ton of different options okay by default the pattern set heirloom is selected in this particular stitch the 705 pattern is selected let me show you what that looks like we probably won't go with that one okay 705 pattern that's a nice looking stitch but for this particular application we wouldn't want to go with that let me show you a cool stitch that I did find now now here again it's like it's like Alice in Wonderland <clears throat> you don't know how far the rabbit hole goes down until you get into the rabbit hole you can <laughs> you start switching you got all of these different you got all of these different collections and then inside of each collection you have a bunch of different stitches all right I'm gonna switch to the quilting collection and we can scroll down this is a, a nice stitch that I found this um, this a310 now right here in the preview it doesn't look real fancy it doesn't look real spectacular you got to remember this is a pattern stitch so it'll be a pattern of this chain style effect so I'm gonna select that one hit OK and hit apply and look that's a nice chain pattern stitch instead of a boring running stitch yeah, that's kind of a chain pattern now remember with V7 you have complete control say that's too big say that's too small well right there you've we've got complete control over the size looky here it's a 0.09 what happens if I make that a uh, 0.15 okay let me click here and make this a 0.15 hit apply 
boom, even bigger. Now that might be bigger than you wanted, okay? So then we can just tick that back down. Oop. We'll make it, a, let's tick it back down to 10, hit apply. Yeah, that looks pretty good, okay? Let me hit okay, and I'm gonna back back out of this. And now look, look at what it's looking like. Now that's spicy, hey, that's looking pretty good. Hey, that's nice. Well, I'm not done, okay? I can make this even cooler. This is where it's starting to get really cool, folks. And remember, you're making your own original stuff. So this is an original S or whatever letter you created. And then it's not only applique, it's spiced up a notch. Bam, right there. Look at how awesome that is. Now I'm gonna do some, I wanna do some kind of an effect, maybe a candle wicking effect on the inside. And that's gonna blow your mind. That's gonna even look more spectacular. And remember, we're not doing anything complicated here. I'm just unlocking secrets of the program and changing the way that you look at things. And when you start to unlock these techniques, you can really start creating some spectacular stuff with very basic shapes. We don't have to know how to draw and do crazy stuff to to make things that look really nice to the eyes, okay? So let me show you. Let's select that chain pattern stitch that we just created, that pink one that's overlapping the finishing stitch. <clears throat> and here's a cool feature. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select outline design. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create another line but not directly on top of it. It's gonna create another running stitch line on either the outside or the inside. A lot of people don't know when you use the outline design feature, you can go negative on your number and I'm gonna show you. And you can go positive. So you can create an outline outside the object and you can create an outline stitch inside the object, okay? And it'll maintain perspective. So it really makes it easy to create these other stitches that you can then turn into candle wicking and pattern stitches that really embellish and spice up your design. Let me show you. So we're selected right here, yes. And then I'm gonna left click outline design. It's under the edit toolbar, the edit section, and I'm gonna hit outline design. And here you can select the color of your outline stitch and you can select the offset. That's what's important right here. And remember, if you get the offset wrong, just hit undo. The undo button is the most powerful button in this program. Do not be afraid to make mistakes and explore and test and try new things because you can always just go up and click, hit that little undo button and nothing ever, ha it's like nothing ever happened, okay? So here we go, I've got, because this is, the setting that I had mine on last time I played with the program, it's on a negative 20 and it's set on blue. I'm gonna change this. From blue, let's see. To maybe a, no, that a, a different shade of blue. We'll stick with that and if I don't like it, I'll change it. So I got it on blue and then I got negative 20. Well, what does this mean, negative 20? That means I'm outlining the shape of that pink chain stitch we just created, but negatively. So it's gonna create a line inside here following the inside contours of the design. If this was without the negative and just point 20, it would create that outline stitch out here, okay? So you can do a positive or a negative. Let me hit, it's on single stitch, let me hit okay. And see where we're at, see? Right there, I've created an outline stitch on the inside of the design, okay? Now, again, that's just a boring running stitch. Hey, let's spice it up a notch. What do you think? Let's go for it. So let me go down here in the color film to the last element, that last blue line, and then I'm gonna left click on the object properties. Okay, now watch, stick with me. From single to candle wicking, okay? And I like, by default, it's this Colonial 4.5 millimeter. I really like, let's click select. I really like this small one, this knot, this three millimeter knot. Watch this, let me hit apply and boom, bam. Okay, I haven't done anything too crazy here. These are all really simple techniques and you have some amazing looking effects combined with applique. 
Now, this is pretty pe spectacular stuff. You, to me, that's, an impre that's impressive. And you could keep going. You could create another line and put another stitch bordering the outline if you just really wanted to get crazy about it. You could s set a pattern stitch over the fat. I mean, that could get real advanced. I don't want to go too far into this lesson. I just wanted y'all to see to this point. Okay? So that's that's really uh, the lesson for today, creating your own original applique and then spicing it up, embellishing it by, by duplicating that, breaking apart the applique, then just simply selecting the placement line, duplicating it, putting it where you want it, and then just changing the fill style, just changing the style of stitch, and then adding an outline to it, changing the style of that stitch. It's pretty easy. Now, this was a little bit longer of a tutorial. You may have to watch this a few times. I'm also going to make a cheat sheet that you can work through so you can keep up. But I guarantee you, after you've gotten to this point and you've done it a few times, you'll have it forever because it may seem like a lot, but it's very simple. I'm Clint Seeley, and thank you for watching.